Hello, everyone. Welcome to CCL's March monthly meeting. I'm Leslie Beatty, CCL's Senior Director of Marketing, and I'm your host for today. Please introduce yourself and your chapter in the Q&A. We'd love to know where you're joining from and how many people are in the room with you. Let's give a big CCL welcome to new volunteers from Fayetteville, Arkansas and St. Joseph, Missouri. Those chapters have recently hosted Climate Advocate Workshops and anyone joining from new chapters in Budapest, Hungary and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with CCL on the essential work that we're doing together to preserve this planet for future generations. CCL helps people engage with our elected officials so that we're heard and so that our government is persuaded to pass ambitious climate change solutions. There are many challenges for us to overcome, but together we're rising to the occasion. On our call today, we're gonna to be discussing CCL's commitment to creating a welcoming space for anyone who wants to do this work with us, specifically as it relates to bridging divides. But first, let's take a moment to share our recent successes. So please share any highlights from your chapter or individual work in the Q&A so we can all see them. And Flannery will read some of them in a few minutes. First, here are the national highlights from this past month. Um, we beat our contact Congress goal in February by 13%. We sent 11,329 messages to Congress asking them to protect climate smart funding in the Farm Bill, which exceeded our goal of 10,000 messages. Nice work, everyone. Farm bill negotiations will be happening throughout the year, so our outreach lays a really strong foundation for the outcomes that we want to see. Our next highlight comes from Canada. Many of you know that Canada has had a carbon fee and dividend policy in place since 2018, but that doesn't mean that their work is done. They are actively supporting and defending the policy. Recently, they lobbied for a more easily understood name for the dividend. And a few weeks ago, they got what they lobbied for. The dividend will be renamed from the Climate Action Incentive Payment to the much simpler Canada Carbon Rebate. These cash rebates will also be labeled more clearly on Canadian bank statements. Great work, CCL Canada. Thanks for working to improve carbon fee and dividend and for sharing the lessons learned with the rest of us. One more national highlight, there's a new study from the Hamilton Project and Brookings Institution that models a carbon fee in addition to a few other climate policies. The highlights of the study are covered in a great article from Heatmap News that we will share in the chat. The headline of the story is a carbon tax is back on the table. Of course, those aren't the exact words we would use. We advocate for a carbon fee and dividend, but this new research can still help create a promising path for a carbon price, including a carbon fee and dividend. Okay. Let's take a few minutes to celebrate some of our local highlights um, and keep them coming in the Q&A. So Elena in Virginia says they had a great Mid-Atlantic Regional Conference a couple weekends ago. Bill Barron, our regional coordinator in the Mountain West did a wonderful tour throughout Montana. You might've spotted some photos in the video before the call this morning. Nadine in New Jersey says her chapter has a new mobilization manager who's getting big results in chapter participation in the CCL monthly action. We love to see that. Howard in Minnesota says his chapter will be delivering dozens of constituent letters to their representative at her in-district office at the end of this month. That's very exciting. Marion in Pennsylvania says her chapter recently went back to in-person meetings and increased their attendance. That's awesome. Flannery, um, can you share a few more from the Q&A? I absolutely can. As usual, they are out there hustling these volunteers. Um, so uh, CCL in Wisconsin held something that is called a giant work party. This is capitalized, so it seems very official. Um, 72 people got together to uh, do uh, phone banking and postcarding to get climate-minded voters out, so that's fantastic. Um, we've got a couple local media successes. Robert says one of his letters to the editor got published. Mike says he's getting a letter published tomorrow in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. So great job, guys. Um, Lisa says that she met in person with her congresswoman uh, and asked her to protect the investments in the farm bill. So she actually had that conversation live. Um, that's wonderful. And then CCL Washington is organizing to build more support for Washington's carbon price. So Great work, everybody. Lots of stuff going on out there. Yes, it sounds like February was really busy for everyone. So good job. 
Okay, the strength of our advocacy at CCL grows as more people and different people join us and become engaged in our work. We are so lucky today to have both Drew Eyerly, CCL's Conservative Outreach Director, and Karina Ramirez, CCL's Diversity and Inclusion Director, joining us on today's call to discuss their own work in this area. Drew and Karina lead a lot of important work for CCL, and today they're going to talk to us about how they became friends, gained understanding, and formed a relationship that has allowed them personally to bridge their own ideological divides. Their friendship and working partnership has yielded tremendous benefits for them and for CCL. So enjoy and please put any questions into the Q&A as we'll hope to have a few minutes to answer them. Drew and Karina, over to you. Right, thank you, Leslie. Um, so Karina and I, we always get a lot of questions about, I wanna understand how to work with this group of people. So we put this presentation together to hopefully help you all understand what you don't understand. What we're going to cover today, we're going to share a bit on our national political divide. We're going to talk about diversity and nonpartisanship as it pertains to CCL. Um, the challenges that Drew and I face and how we work together. And we will ask you to rethink what you know. So in order for Karina and I to really develop the relationship that we've had, we had to be very open, honest, and vulnerable with each other. Uh, to pass that kind of information on to you all and the lessons that we learn, we're going to be vulnerable you know, here as well. So we do ask that this is the place for collective growth and understanding, coming to the table with an open mind and hearing and understanding each other and not attacking people for their beliefs. We're going to take a look at our political divide. All right. So looking at this animation here, uh, it's a visual representation of the last 23 years of the political divisiveness in our country. Um, as you can see, we used to be together a lot more than what we are, uh, but in time that has shifted to, you know, a lot of polarization, um, but it, it did create 23 years ago. And while it may have been exploited more recently by certain politicians, it's not the result of one person, one policy, one thing. This is a choice we all made as individuals. And in order to come back together, we're going to have to make that same choice as individuals to work and understand one another. At CCL, we have volunteers and staff members that come from different points of view. And we're all addressing the same issue that matters to us, which is climate change. We value diversity and partnership at CCL, and that is rare for an environmental organization. I think often on a difficult challenge that we have undertaken and what a big responsibility that is. All right, so let's take a look at some of the challenges that we've identified. So Drew and I have heard many things, and we now have a definition for the comments that you see on your screen. A microaggression is defined as a statement, an action, or an incident regarded as an instant of indirect, subtle, or unintentional discrimination against members of a marginalized group, such as a racial or ethnic minority. If you look at the conservative side of that, um, you know, it's it is important to know that you know a lot of the, the the microaggressions that I've experienced were delivered in good faith, you know, with the best of intentions. And I have had conversations with those people after the fact and was received very well that this might not be the best way to approach it. But it's very clear that you know we and myself and Karina and the people that we work with are experiencing the same things. We just don't see it. Exactly. And because of this, uh, Drew and I will share a resource that we created um, that we hope that you can share in your next meetings and future events. Great. So confirmation bias. This is people believing what they want to believe and looking for things that confirm those beliefs. Uh, we think it's very important to overcome those confirmation bias. Uh, think about the things that you expect out of people and then look for the opposite while you're out there. Look for instances that prove that that confirmation bias or that stereotype wrong. So uh, in planning this, this presentation, we were thinking about how Drew and I came to know each other. So through our many conversations, we have determined that we come from similar backgrounds. and But we came out with different ideas and views of the world. For me, my family didn't have a lot of means. I was the first person uh, in my family to go to college. Learning what that meant was a big deal. Uh, for me as a woman and as the eldest in my family. I believe if I'm a direction got me to school. No one would have ever seen me if the school did not consider looking for me in my low-income neighborhood. 
throughout the years, I became a journalist and I was gifted with the opportunity to learn about different communities and the obstacles that they face. I know many people need assistance in different ways, so I support the welfare system. I will be the first to advocate for people that need that help. Issues like race, poverty, immigration, climate displacement, those are real for me because I have lived them or have seen others live them. I usually say I am the product of my lived experience. What about Drew? So I understand the intentions of incorporating affirmative action, but it's been very difficult for me to you know, move past my own lens on that topic. Uh, my parents, they were struggling when I was born and throughout much of my life. And if you've seen my, my video, um, I'm only the second person to graduate high school and the first person to go to traditional college in my family. Um, I made the choice to join the military in order to improve my situation for myself and, uh, you know, and my parent family and got preference points because of that. But they came from a personal choice. And I firmly believed that if I could do it, anybody else could as well. You know, I believe that the welfare system is flawed you know, and easily exploited. Many of my family, they dropped out of uh, you know, high school and immediately went on government assistance and collected benefits. And from my experience and my perspective, it was much easier for them to get onto that assistance than it was for them to get the necessary skills to get off. Uh, our backgrounds, they're very similar, but you know, looked at through very different lenses and experiences. I could have very easily developed the same perspective as Karina. So if you would, while we move on here in the chat, share your points of view on our two lived experiences. How are they similar? It'd be very easy to find out how we're different, but we want to encourage you to identify the similarities in us and what we believe. Okay, so now we, uh, what you shared that in the chat, we are going to share with you how we work together. So I see Karina as an individual. I do not see her as the DNI director. I don't see her as you know somebody that's part of the you know Democratic Party or liberal. You know when I first got to CCL, I, I had an assumption that you know probably wouldn't be able to work together with Karina, um, and I didn't like that. So I made an intentional choice to reach out to her and just get to know her as Karina, and we had several conversations. Uh, some work related, some philosophical, some just fun and catching up. Uh, this relationship, you know, it didn't happen overnight. Um, but we didn't start our conversational our conversations off with any type of comp or confrontational ideas or thoughts either. It was just getting to know her as a person, not her position on politics. As our friendship has developed, it has actually allowed me to be able to talk to Drew about issues that matter to me. For example. Um, where we were having a discussion as an organization about adding nuclear um, as a climate solution, um, it, it got me very nervous. But having to understand Drew's point of view and how he saw that, you know, it gave me an opportunity to be able to explain to him how I was feeling about that. And through our conversations, I just told him I wanted for all of us to recognize the pros and cons and get into the habit of highlighting uh, what are the pros and cons of all the solutions that we support. Um, so I asked to at least acknowledge this in future material, and this was done. Um, Drew and I recognized that we are going to be faced with different scenarios each time, and this conversation is going to continue, and it's going to take a totally different world depending on what we're facing and what we're discussing. All right, so here's where we want to forget everything that we know and encourage us to celebrate volunteers for who they are and not their labels. We are so much more than the boxes that we place ourselves in. Uh, I want you to be happy that I'm here and not just because I'm conservative, but because I'm Drew and what I bring to the table as Drew. You know, praise the action of the person and not the label. Uh, understand that we're all here for the same same results. We might have different reasons for being here, but we want the same results and celebrate those difference in reasons. Um, again, remove those labels and see the person. Find the commonalities that you have outside of politics and climate interest. It's foundational to actually building that relationship and developing that trust that has allowed Karina and I to have the more difficult conversations and come out with some understanding, respect, and even, you know, more often than not, agreement. Um, you know, recognize the benefits, the diversity in your in your your chapter. Um, diverse representation, you know, it demonstrates broad impact with singular focus. 
you know, and take time to understand and respect both cultures, not just demand respect for your own. Understand where everybody is coming from and give grace and forgiveness when somebody crosses a boundary that they may not know that you have. And I feel the same thing at Drew. I don't want you to invite me to this work because you want diversity or you need a person of color in your photo. I am here because I believe in the work TCL wants to accomplish. And I am working and dreaming of the type of livable world we all want. Because of our many conversations and situations that Drew and I have experienced, um, we created this short guide to help you uh, think of some common situations that you may come across. We ask you to consider how we engage as people and what we say to each other. So next steps. We want you to do, really do take a look at that creating a welcoming space resource. Um, we ask you to be intentional when addressing anyone have an open mind. Again, we come from different places and have different lived experiences. Uh, we want to recommend to you that to consider opening your chapter meeting with an inclusivity, inclusivity statement such as this. We always assume that we have people here from different life experiences. If you are a conservative, you are welcome. If you are a progressive, you are welcome. Whatever your political affiliation, age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religion, language, ability, or background. We welcome everyone who wants to work towards Congress enacting major climate legislation. As a result, for the purpose of our meeting, this is a reminder that we'll keep our comments and work focused on building this common ground. Before we finish this conversation, we want to invite you to take on a community challenge. Um, Think of this as having a conversation around the water cooler. And we ask this, Drew and I do this, so we want everybody to put this in practice. Um, this is your challenge for the next couple of months for you. Um, before we see you in our next workshops or before a summer conference, we want you to have a conversation with someone new, someone you don't know, someone in your social circles, or someone in your chapter. We ask that you express genuine interest in them and to also let us know what you learned. Where did you meet? What did you talk about? We don't care if it's not climate. This is just a general conversation about getting to know someone. Was the interest reciprocated? If you give us an opportunity, please, um, you know, have this conversation and let us know about your experience in our emails right there. Thank you for joining. All right, so we've got a few questions um, and we do have time to take a few questions. Um, so before I jump into those, because I see a few still coming into the Q&A, I want to share some of what people identified as similarities between the two of you in that exercise. Um, folks said both of you came from limited means and worked hard. You both care about your families and education. You both made very deliberate choices to improve your circumstances. You're both generous and open minded. Um, and somebody very sweetly said, you both found where you belong in the space when you joined CCL. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got a few questions coming in. Um, Tom asked, um, said, I'm glad to see conservatives in CCL and asked, how do you, Drew, define what a conservative is? Oh, my. Um, so I, me personally, now, and this could change. But me personally, I define my own conservatism as how I approach an issue, not the issues that I care about. Issues are not polarized. It's our ideas of how we want to address them that tend to get polarized. I am very economic minded, outdoors, uh, business, things like that. So it's how, but the fact that I care about climate change does not make me any less of a Republican than the person, you know, somebody else. Absolutely. Um Okay, um, another question says, do you have any examples where your discussions led to a change of opinion about an issue? Mm -hmm. Drew, I'm going to give that one to you. <laughs> I've had, uh, yeah, no, I've had conversations with uh, Karina. Uh, we had an incident last summer where um, Karina and Stephanie both came to me with an issue and I've had immediate defensive knee jerk reaction. Um, but it was Stephanie's raw emotion that I thought about for the next three hours. You know, she came to me as a person, talked to me as a person, was very open and vulnerable with me. And the it just stuck with me. And the more that I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? Stephanie and Karina are right. So I found them and I apologized for my immediate reactions. 
and said, no, you guys, you know what you're doing here. And I, I'm sorry that I responded the way I did in the beginning. So I had a change of opinion. If I could add to that incident, um, you know, I would not have been able to go to Drew and share however I was feeling if I did not have built this relationship with him. As him and I, you know, been telling throughout this presentation, it has been a deliberate effort for us to get to know each other so that when difficult situations come, you know, they happen, we can have the conversation because if we don't have the conversation, nothing improves. So at least now we, you know, we, we have this relationship and we would love to see other people experience what we experience. Awesome. Um, okay, this is a good question from Daniel. How can chapters make space for members to let the group know if they feel disrespected or dismissed? So let's say there's been been some kind of a uh, an injury, perhaps. And how do how can chapters help address that? Personally, I think it starts at the friendship level. Does that person feel just like Karina explained? Um, feel comfortable enough in expressing their their discontent, their injury, their slight. If there is someone that has been affected by a particular situation, you can give the power to that person. Ask that person how they want that incident addressed. Is it a one-on-one? -on -one? Is it that person talking to whoever, you know, was involved in the incident? Um, you know, give that person the opportunity to share whether they even want you to consider addressing the issue, because that could also be, um, you know, something that comes up. Sometimes people just are not interested. They're like, you know what, we're going to make it be a bygone. Um, but at least, you know, give people an opportunity to share with you what is it that they would like to do and, and what do they consider to be a solution as well. Okay, great. Um, and if I'll, I'll give another plug for that, creating a welcoming space resource, hopefully there's some conversation starters in there that will help uh, help folks start off on the right foot so that maybe we avoid some of those uh, some of those feelings. Um, we have a question uh, from Dar asking, how can I find the difference between coming together and you have to agree with me? Great, I'll pass that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, each, each person, how, how do we put this? You know, when we say that you have to look at, at each person as an individual, right? Um, it is such a challenge to look at to look at people and look at it with a good intention each and every time. Um, I can tell you it's not going to be easy. There have been situations and times where I just cannot be in room for certain people, but that's because I know my limitations and I know where I am. Um, but depending on, you know, what is it that you want to do? I can say each and every conversation is different. And I invite you to continue to try. I think what Drew and I are finding now, the more that we talk about our, our experiences and situations, if we don't try, we don't get anywhere. And right now, as you know, I mean, the climate is so incredibly difficult. It is not fun to be people believing what we believe in different spaces. Um, but none of that is going to disappear overnight, right? And it's upon us to take this one conversation at a time. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have for questions. So I'm going to pass it back to Leslie, but thank you both so much. Leslie? Amazing. Drew and Karina, thank you so much for the work that you're doing together. You show beautifully how building an authentic relationship creates the trust for bridging divides. It's such a gift to have a friend with the different life experiences and perspectives from our own. And so may every one of us here at CCL find our own Drew or Karina. And if you'd like to hear more, this is part of a larger conversation that took place last October inside the Diversity and Inclusion Action Team. Check out that team for more stories and advice from Drew and Karina on this topic. Okay, now let's talk about what's happening in March. We are asking Congress, uh, we sorry, we are asking you to contact Congress this month about the Prove It Act. This is a bipartisan bill that we've been supporting since it was introduced last summer. This year, it has already passed out of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. And we're helping to build further momentum by asking senators to co-sponsor this bill and encouraging representatives to introduce a version of the bill in the House. If you haven't already, please send your messages today at cclusa.org forward slash prove it. 
And if you want to know more about the bill, check out our suggested talking points in the March action sheet. Okay, we are less, oh, sorry. Yeah, we are less than two weeks away from our third annual Conservative Climate Leadership Conference. It is happening on March 19th and 20th in Washington, DC. 70 of our right of center volunteers will be hearing from an incredible slate of speakers, getting trained and then heading to Capitol Hill the next day to meet with Republican members of Congress. This is not your typical climate meeting. Given how polarized climate change is, it is extremely important to create space for right of center people to gather together and to meet with their member of Congress. Thank you to Drew Ierly and CCL's DC team, regional coordinators and event planners for pulling this event together. The conference is small in numbers, but mighty in impact. Um, Drew, to you and everyone who will be in attendance at the Conservative Conference, good luck. We are proud of you. We know you'll do a great job and we'll be cheering you on. For those of us who won't be in attendance, we can follow along with the action on CCL's social media channels. Please make sure to check out our Instagram, X or Facebook on March 19th or 20th to see and share all the photos and videos from this event. It's very helpful to spread the word about CCL's work by sharing this story on how CCLers are making a positive difference. It's the most important thing that you can do on social media this month, so please mark your calendars for the 19th and 20th. And speaking of making a positive difference in DC, registration has just opened for the summer conference and lobby day which will be June 8th through the 11th. Everyone is invited to attend this flagship event. If you've never attended a lobby day, here's what you can expect. In a single day, over a thousand CCLers from across the country have hundreds of respectful and productive meetings with Congress. Meeting with CCLers and seeing us in the hallways and cafeterias of the House and Senate building leaves a deeper impression on members of Congress. We will arrange your meetings, we'll put you with supportive lobby teams, and we will train you on everything you need to know at the preceding conference. Please register to help make this lobby day the very biggest and best one yet. And here's a small sample of what to look forward to at the conference this year. We are excited to welcome Jerome Foster II as our keynote speaker. Jerome is a member of the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council, and he is the youngest ever advisor to the White House, and he's also a longtime CCLer. We will also dive deeper into bridging divides, and we will talk strategies for elevating climate change in this year's elections. For those of you arriving on Saturday, we're cooking up some new activities, including a postcard writing party, getting out in Washington, D.C. to have climate conversations, and our first ever student summit. You can go to cclusa.org forward slash summer to register. Register early to grab your lobby spot and to get the early bird discount, which ends on April 1st. Okay. And here are some ideas for spreading the word about climate solutions and CCL's work through local media this month. First, we have an op-ed for you related to Thursday's State of the Union address. Secondly, if someone in your chapter is attending the conservative conference, you can share that news. And lastly, if your chapter is planning to drop off materials at your members of Congress's in-district office, that's a great chance to send out a press release. You can find more details in CCL's action sheet on CCL Community. And finally, we'd like to invite you to support CCL by making a monthly donation in March. And joining us now is CCL's Acting Development Director, Topher Anderson, to tell you a little bit more about this opportunity. All right, thank you, Leslie. Uh, yeah, so one of your March actions is to consider making a monthly gift to Citizens Climate Lobby and think of ways that you might encourage others to do the same. Uh, and this is just really important to us because uh, we run only two fundraisers every year because we made the intentional choice to give as much bandwidth uh, to focusing on your vital work and keeping up with what's going on in Congress. Uh, but what that means is that hitting our goals this month is extremely important. Uh, our monthly gifts fund the work to uh, help our government affairs team keep doing what they're doing, and it funds our lobby drives like the conservative conference and our upcoming summer conference. These monthly gifts provide us this stable support throughout the year, which really gives us funding predictability to make long-term plans, and then it gives us stability to really respond nimbly when new opportunities come up. And what's really exciting is that a generous angel donor has offered us a challenge gift for this March. 
So right now, the impact of every new or upgraded monthly donation will be quadrupled for the next three months. So if you give $100 a month to Citizens Climate Lobby, our angel donor will give a $300 a month to Citizens Climate Education. And they've pledged to do this for up to $10,000 in new or upgraded monthly donations. So please, please, please help us use every last dollar of this awesome opportunity. Uh, to help, you can make a donation by going to our website and pressing donate in the upper right-hand corner, or you can go to cclusa.org forward slash donate. If you're already a monthly donor and you want to upgrade your donation, you can email development at citizensclimate.org, which we'll put in the chat, with your name and the amount that you'd like to increase your donation to. And lastly, please share this. Please get the word out. Uh, please ask your chapter members and maybe set a goal for their chapter to find a few new mo monthly donations in your chapter. Or ask your family and friends who are always saying they are really concerned about climate change but don't have the time. This is a really easy quick way to make a huge impact. So thank you so much and have a great one. Thank you, Topher. All right, that is it for our March meeting. Thank you everyone for joining. Let's go out and bridge some divides so that we can get good climate laws passed. We'll take a few minutes to say goodbye on CCL TV. Thanks everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. Like what you hear? Recommend us to your friends and make sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us show up on other listeners' feeds. Feel free to pass on any suggestions for future episodes in the comments as well. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.